Hi everybody, it is December 5th, 2021, Sunday. And here is the baby, he's just taking his weekly soaking, just relaxed. Been in there for about an hour now. And on this soaking, I'm just using regular spring water. And for all his treatments, this is the number one treatment right here. This works the best out of everything. I was able to turn his heat down to 90 degrees from 95. Working out very well. Everything is going as planned. He now has adaptive immunity. And his immune system is in full gear. The whole idea that I've been doing with this animal since the beginning it was providing him with what's called passive immunity. Passive immunity is going to sustain the animal's life until adaptive immunity is acquired. What happens is these cells, they have to become weakened, they have to be receptive, and they have to be permissive in order for a viral, viral infection to even take place. Okay? And how this is done is, well, in his case, he's a sub-adult. So it could be because his immune system is weak and it's not evolved yet. Adults, usually it's free radicals. They go in and steal the electrons off the cells. Okay? And then once they're exposed to the pathogen by any means necessary, it's still a mystery on how, but it just happens. Then the viral infection can initiate, it can hijack a cell then become a host cell, and then the virus can then start manipulating his other cells and replicating and wreaking havoc inside his body. So I used the governor's hydroxytyrosol, which is a very potent antioxidant, by the way, the most potent antioxidant, the most powerful natural antioxidant known to science. And you want to use that with a healthy fat. And the governor olive oil is a healthy fat. It's all about absorption. I use the hemp plant. It contains all 20 amino acids, the essential amino acids that wreak havoc on viral replication. You got that? So, then I just put a little bit of zinc, just a touch, because the governor olive oil was just a little weak on the zinc side of the fence. Not much, but I just a little drop's not going to hurt. And a few extra drops of vitamin D3. And he's doing very well. And in the future, the plan is about another two months of that weekly feedings now. I was doing every two feedings a week, every three days. Now I slacked them off to once a week. And this will continue for about the next two months. And then I'm going to switch him over to chaga extract. So that we can uh, maintain his newly acquired antibodies for that pathogen. He has the antibodies now, but to maintain them throughout, throughout his life, we are going to want to keep treating him. And one feeding every other month for the first year. And then say the second year after that, one feeding every three months. Four times a year will be more than enough. There's no need to overdo it once they're you know, back to normal health. Right, buddy? Yes, it's all about antioxidants. In the wild, your prey items, wild guinea pigs, small monkeys, they eat a complete host of different antioxidants in the wild. And then you consume those prey items, and that's how you get your antioxidants. You see, if the frozen thawed rodents were good enough, you never would have became sick to begin with. Even though you were exposed to that virus, your immune system should have easily fought it off. But it didn't. You became ill. See, this virus doesn't bother these guys in the wild. Because their bodies contain the antioxidants that are needed to fight this pathogen. Because you can sure as shit guarantee... That this pathogen they're exposed to in the wild just like they are in captivity. Captivity, the virus wreaks havoc. In the wild, it does not. Why is that? 
pretty simple. You take the animal out of its environment, you know, change the lighting, the heating, the feeding regimen, the substrate, even the type of water they drink. And over time, you know, oxidative stress, free radicals on older animals can then open them up their immune systems to these virus virus pathogens where kept captivity you know that's where they wreak havoc in the wild not not at all it's a pretty simple walk around just to give them antioxidants in captivity to avoid the problem and that's how i went about it anyway and no this animal is not going to be a biohazard for the rest of his life because like i said before his immune system now has memory cells, adaptive immunity, and the other animals, the virus will probably be long gone by the time he's exposed to anything else, which he won't be exposed to anything else, just saying though, you can bring a ball python in here, blood python, Burmese python, you know, if they're treated, their feeding regimen's up to par and they've been well taken care of, their cells are not going to be receptive to uh, this virus, but Animals that had a pretty bad feeding regimen, not the best taken care of, then yes, they can fall ill to this virus. Just depends on the animal, really. It's going to depend a lot. Me, I just, from knowing what I know now, I just definitely, without hesitation, just give them the antioxidants in captivity. That way, I'll never again have to worry about this problem on any of these animals. Nicaraguan's doing great. Aztec's doing great. She's in a shed right now. My uh, Guyana, she's in the shed right now too. Him, he's just hanging out. Aren't you? You're just hanging out, just using your body as a pillow. Yep. It's gonna keep giving you your antioxidants. You're doing very well. Yeah, his stools came back clean. No more liver infection liver infection's gone his stools are back to normal coloring for those who don't know he was giving me these really light colored stools that clearly ind indicates that the virus is attacking the liver hydroxytyrosol does a wonderful job the detox in the liver doesn't it buddy you found that out didn't you and all that weight loss he had back on october 30th 80 percent of that was water weight he was unable to retain water well, we got that all situated. Pedialyte water. The electrolytes have been restored. So we're just using good old fashioned spring water for this soaking. It's all it's really required. So I soak them once a week. All of my animals get soaked once a week, whether they need it or not. Just to avoid the problems. Don't want dehydration. You know. Well, that's it for now. Just wanted to do a video show you. He's doing really well. He has a 100% chance of survival rate. I'll tell you that right now. Don't you, buddy? Yeah, so you're not going to be able to infect other snakes either. Say that's just completely nonsense. Yes. If those animals have been well taken care of and their blood cells are non-permissive and non-receptive... They're not going to get infected even if they're exposed to the pathogen because you can, like I said, you can guarantee they're exposed to this pathogen in the wild and yet they don't come down ill with it. Only in captivity. Isn't that ironic? And interesting how that happens. And human like viruses to go with it. Arena LCMB, reptilian meningitis, all the same damn thing. <laughs>